Worn by his mundane life, history professor Adam Bell soon discovers an actor who strikingly resembles him. However, he succumbs to an obsession as he uncovers the identity of his double and entangles himself in his complex affair. Through an answering machine, Adam's mother worries for her son, who lives in a new desolate apartment. Meanwhile, in an underground club, Anthony Clare, an actor, enters a dim-lit room with explicit shows performed by unclothed women. Then, the hedonistic man vividly watches a woman unrobe herself and trample on a live tarantula served on a silver platter. In Toronto's dull, hazy city, Adam teaches his class about dictatorship, emphasizing its cyclic tendency throughout history. After school, the professor commutes home to his empty apartment. Soon after, his girlfriend Mary arrives, and they share an intimate night before the woman leaves Adam's apartment. The following day, Professor Adam repeats his class about the recurring history of control-driven dictators. Afterward, he goes home, where Mary comes by and fools around with the wary man, whose mundane life repeats the next morning. One day, Adam's colleague, Josh, strikes up a conversation with him about movies. The professor isn't fond of watching them but asks for a film recommendation. Josh suggests the local movie, Where There's a Will, There's a Way, which intrigues Adam. On his way home, Adam stops by a video store and rents the film his colleague recommended. Later, the professor grades his students' papers while Mary drinks alone. The intoxicated woman invites her boyfriend to bed, but Adam declines as he's getting work done, so Mary sleeps alone. Much later, Adam watches the movie he rented on his laptop. Afterward, he tries to get it on with his sleeping girlfriend, but Mary resists. Repulsed by his actions, Mary gets up and leaves Adam on the bed. Later that night, the professor wakes up and revisits the film as he remembers a strange detail. Then, he pauses in a scene where he spots the bellhop, which is portrayed by an actor who looks exactly like him. The next day, Adam attends his class late, where he discusses philosopher's theory of repeating historical events. In his apartment, Adam paces the room, disturbed by the striking resemblance of the actor. He takes note of the bellhop actor's names at the credits to narrow down his double's identity. Through the web, he discovers that his lookalike is called Daniel St. Clair, so he lists the actor's other films and rents them from the video store. Afterward, he skips the rental movies to Daniel's screen time, pausing to where the actor is trampled on. Distressed, the professor searches his stack of unpacked boxes and retrieves a torn picture of him and an unidentified person. He places it beside the actor's official photo, confirming their uncanny resemblance. In the following days, Adam repeatedly stares at Daniel's profile on the website as he ignores his mother's calls. Eventually, the professor decides to visit the actor's talent agency, so he buys shades to somehow conceal his face. Arriving at the place, he parks outside the guarded building and waits for an opportunity to enter. When someone exits, Adam rushes to hold the door open, but it is too late. Soon, he follows a woman who exits the building, successfully getting inside. However, a security guard recognizes Adam as Anthony, Daniel's real name. The professor plays along, pretending to be the actor. He learns that Anthony hasn't returned to the agency for six months. Nevertheless, Adam claims a package addressed to the actor and leaves. In his car, Adam learns that Anthony lives in Mississauga and stalks him there. Then, the professor calls the actor's apartment from a phone booth. Anthony's wife answers as Adam pretends to be someone else. Laughingly, the woman recognizes Adam's voice as her husband's voice. Confused, the professor stammers and insists that he isn't Anthony. Recognizing the man's seriousness, the woman fearsomely asks who he is, so Adam abruptly ends the call. Afterward, Adam returns home upset and feeling suffocated by his discovery. Still, the troubled professor calls Anthony's number once more. This time, Anthony, a man who sounds like Adam, answers the phone. The professor introduces himself as the one who spoke with his wife, but the actor threatens to call the police. Insistent, Adam points out that they sound alike, but Anthony drops the call. Nevertheless, Adam dials again and frantically explains his fascination upon knowing his doppelganger. Then, he introduces himself and invites the actor to meet up. In Anthony's apartment, a pregnant woman, Helen, watches her husband end the call with Adam. The actor calls the professor a stalker, to which the woman laughs, thinking that Anthony's messing with her. Helen probes into the caller's identity, whom she thinks is the husband of Anthony's mistress, which they have fought about before. However, Anthony insists it was just a crazy stalker and leaves to avoid his wife interrogation. Then, Helen checks Anthony's phone, seeing the number registered as an unknown caller. Soon after, Anthony researches the professor online and finds Adam under the history department's faculty listing. That night, as Anthony sleeps beside his wife, Helen sneaks up and finds Adam's name written on a folded paper. 
she searches his name too and discovers her husband's findings. The following day, the actor calls the professor and agrees to meet with him that Sunday in an inn outside town. Meanwhile, Helen visits Adam's college alone to see the man her husband was talking to. Exhausted, the professor sits on a bench outside his building when the dumbfounded woman stares and approaches her husband's lookalike. However, the man doesn't recognize her as Anthony's wife. Unbeknownst to Adam, Helen thinks that he is her husband and worries about his bizarre behavior. Ecstatic about his scheduled meetup with the actor, the professor initiates a conversation with the stranger. He learns that she's six months pregnant and excuses himself as he returns to class. Distressed, Helen hurriedly phones her husband just as Adam enters the building and out of her view. Anthony answers, but the woman doesn't respond, bewildered by her discovery. Later in Anthony's apartment, the actor arrives home from a run as he nonchalantly shares about his day and asks his wife for some blueberries. However, Helen is still troubled by her husband's exact double and remains silent the whole day. That night, Helen finally tells Anthony that she went to see Adam at the professor's work. Frightened, the woman asks her husband about Adam's existence, insisting that the confused actor knows exactly what's happening. Afterward, Anthony and Adam see a bare woman with the spider's head walking the hallway in an underground club. Suddenly, the strange dream wakes the two identical men. On Sunday afternoon, the professor arrives at the inn carrying Anthony's letter he received at his agency. Then he enters the empty room where he'll meet the actor. A few seconds later, Anthony enters and stares at Adam, recognizing their exact resemblance. The actor asks to see the professor shaking hands, guessing they're brothers as he finds them identical. Adam denies it but learns that they have the same scar on each other's chest as well, disturbing him further. Disoriented by the odd revelation, the professor steps back and leaves Anthony's letter on the bed before driving away. On the road, the actor glances at his double once more from his motorbike and speeds home. Soon, Anthony stalks Adam outside his apartment, where he sees the professor exit and kiss his girlfriend goodbye. As his double drives away to the university, the actor parks his bike and follows Mary to the bus. Anthony checks her out and eyes Mary's heels which stimulates him. Then, he stalks Mary to work and contemplates his actions when he reaches home to Helen. Days after, Adam tells his mother about his identical twin, but she dismisses his worries and reminds him that he's an only child, unlike what Anthony suggested. Then, she offers him blueberries, which he claims not to like, contrary to what his mother knows. Furthermore, the confident woman tells him to stop worrying and drop his fantasies of becoming a movie actor, which is coincidentally Anthony's profession. A spider figuratively looms over their hazy city just as Adam and Anthony's worlds get tangled up in a web-like mess. In Adam's bathroom, the professor holds his head in his hands as he feels the scar he shares with his double. Meanwhile, Anthony confronts the professor through the mirror as he sees Adam's similar features. The actor plans to accuse Adam of sleeping with Helen, then trade places with him so that he can sleep with Mary. The following day, Anthony enters the professor's barren apartment, but Adam asks him to leave. However, the actor confronts him about sleeping with Helen and demands to have his car. He reveals that he'll bring Mary to a romantic getaway while pretending to be Adam, so he'll get even and disappear from his life forever. Afterward, the identical men trade places as Anthony drives Mary elsewhere. Meanwhile, Adam takes a cab to the actor's place. The building's concierge greets him, so he claims to have forgotten his keys. In the elevator, the concierge expresses his desire to return to the underground club he went to with the actor. The man reveals that the key to the pleasure room has changed while desperately persuading Adam to tag him along. The professor pretends to understand the concierge's concern and enters the apartment the unsuspecting man opened. Inside, Adam looks around the lavish apartment and finds a stiletto in one of the actor's closets. Then, he dresses up in Anthony's clothes and finds blueberries in the fridge. Moments later, he notices a framed picture on the shelf, similar to the torn picture back in his apartment. He discovers Helen, the woman he met outside the university, clinging to Anthony with whom Adam shares the same identity. That night, Helen arrives home, surprised that her husband is home and not with his mother. Not sure of what to do, Adam pretends to be Anthony and cautiously asks the pregnant woman if she needs anything. Smiling warmly, Helen notices her husband's change of demeanor and invites him to bed. So, Adam carefully unclothes himself and lies under the sheets. Helen stares at her strange husband and slowly paces his hand on her swollen womb. When she embraces him, she asks about his day at school, implying that she recognizes his change of personality. Meanwhile, Anthony spends an intimate night with Mary. Suddenly, the woman stops and distances herself from the actor, as she notices the mark on his ring finger, implying that he's married. Anthony claims that it has always been there, but Mary disagrees. On the drive back home, the two argue with each other as Anthony furiously tells Mary to get out of the car. Then, the actor swerves off the road and crashes. 
However, neither of the two is seen inside the upturned vehicle, meaning that the accident is only an illustration of Adam forcing himself to end his temptations of infidelity. In Anthony's apartment, Helen comforts Adam, who bursts into tears as he mentally abolishes his deceitful thoughts. Imagined as the actor crashing his car. His wife kisses him and tells him to stay the way he is without switching back to his treacherous subconsciousness. The following day, Adam wears Anthony's clothes and finds the confidential letter beneath its sleeve. He opens it and finds a key that unlocks a room in the underground club. Then Helen interrupts his thoughts, to which he tells her that he'll go somewhere that night, planning to visit the underground club. His wife doesn't respond, so he follows her to the other room. However, he finds an enormous tarantula cowering from the man who thinks of rekindling his lecherous temptations. The beast mirrors his sinful desire as he willingly falls prey to his web of dilemma in a disastrous cycle. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.